Pulse Check. How's it going guys and thank you for joining us. I'm Andros, as you know, and we are going to do a Sick Critic Pulse Chat, something we haven't done in a very long time. Sorry if this intro is absolute trash. I am incredibly excited to introduce a really awesome friend that I met at PAX. His name is Daniel Thompson. He's with the website Nintendo Enthusiast. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and don't let me botch all Hey! Oh no, you're good, you're good. I'm, yeah, I'm Daniel Thompson. I write for NintendoEnthusiast.com and a couple other sites been a freelance games journalist since i was 15 so boy been in this game for for a while let's just say that <laughs> well either way guys we are here to pretty much i know pax is about a week or so away i mean i'm not keeping track at this point but still needed like some time to digest it at least for myself yeah yeah because like oh, literally yeah. that was my first pax so that was a yeah so that was the thing I, I need i need a time to kind of adjust to what exactly exactly what it was that i experienced so i kind of wanted to do that and then try and get some people together to actually talk so funny enough this is going to be the first video that we do and then we're going to do one more on sunday night with another person so actually if you wanted to join that one you're more than welcome i'd love to be on that i got there's so much from pax i want to talk about so like i guess let's get started so uh to start i guess i'll ask you what was the first thing when the show floor opened what was the first thing you actually went to and looked oh shoot oh no why would you oh no <laughs> you, oh, you're not gonna like this answer oh, God. Uh, did i tell you did i tell you what it was i mm -mm. think i feel like i might have okay so i i'm waiting in line and see this is the weirdest thing about this pact it's like we're in between console generations and it's like okay so i got like what am i looking forward to and I, I was legitimately standing in line i was like literally nothing like i don't want to go see borderlands 3 the hey. nintendo line is going to be too long <laughs> mm. and like i i was like i could go wait in line for the death stranding thing i guess and so like i get over there and it's like nine well first they open it really late like 45 minutes late you'd say like probably 30 minutes late yeah it was pretty bad because i think they said it was, they had it like was the, awful. the fire marshal is there or something yeah the fire marshal wanted to play final fantasy 7 <laughs> he wanted to make sure it was up to code <laughs> <laughs> um so i went to the death stranding thing and by the time i already got there it was just like full like i was i would have to wait for two hours or something i had an appointment at 10 so i was looking around like what can i just like quickly play and sure enough, I look over, I see Predator Hunting Grounds, and I'm like, you know, I'm curious. I'm curious about this game. So I went over, played as uh, not the Predator, but uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like whoever whoever the characters are in the, that game. And I played that game and I killed the Predator because I looked up in the trees and I saw his like cloaking thing and I just like kept following him and shooting him, much to the detest of the person playing as the Predator for the first time. It was great. It's a really good way to kick off PAX. You know, I'm going to be real. I didn't even know that game was at PAX. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, whenever I I haven't really found anyone else who's been talking about it. So I think I am also like in the minority with that. Wow. So, mm, well, at least you got to play something immediately. Um, for uh, uh -huh. For me... Yeah, for me, uh, Rebecca and I, uh, th that was the, uh, the person that was with me with the pink hair. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, um, the first thing we did was uh, we went straight to Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got in line for Luigi's Mansion. And um, whew, 30 minutes went by and we're uh, just kind of waiting still. <laughs> And then another 20 minutes went by. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> uh -oh. Like, I left the line immediately. I decided this was not for me to wait. Um, I think, yeah, right from there, we went straight over to Dragon Ball. And the line was, like, almost non-existent. We went and waited for Dragon Ball. Uh, I think it took us about 15 minutes, and we were actually able to get over and play it. And I actually enjoyed it. It was it was actually pretty fun. Um, hilariously enough, it was exactly what I expected. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but a weird thing that did happen while we were playing it, though, this girl, I guess out of like sheer excitement, just right across from me. I don't know if we got that on footage, 
or not like because i edited like the footage to get like the, the screen a little bit better um i should go back and look but like this girl you can see off to the right she's so excited about the game that she literally fainted while standing and just fell over and took everything down with her what yeah and then after they got what? her back up yeah they got her right back up standing again like some people helped her up she fell over again and like after they like wouldn't like basically they went and got like something for her to sit down so that she's not falling over so she could continue trying the game she fell out of the chair so then they literally just made her just lay down on the ground she just she couldn't even play anymore they just made her lay there but if you keep fainting what? just stay here yeah it was what? it was crazy like i'm at, now thinking about it i'm wondering if i have that in the footage or at least people gasping from it because i need to actually go back and look at it because rebecca was recording me play and she was literally i could see her watching the whole thing and not even looking at the um the camera so like i don't know it was it was insane <laughs> yeah oh my gosh yeah um, I, I can't even i i the thing is is i was not interested in that dragon ball game until you told that story and now i'm very interested in that <laughs> dragon ball game yeah i'm and wondering I want, if I want to feel what she felt so bad <laughs> yeah i like i kind of want to see what was going on on the screen where she felt like she needed to faint like i i don't know um I, i'm going to imagine it's the hype of knowing you're going to get one of those weird goku hats after you win so like you get this this, oh that might have been what it was i don't yeah you get this like weird band with the super saiyan hair and it's literally just a styrofoam i think it's styrofoam it's like plastic and styrofoam thing like somehow survived my trip all the way back home um i actually still have it with me i guess i can put a picture of it up for people to see exactly what it looks like it's lame though i put it on my bb8 when i got home so super saiyan bb8 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't even i still don't even know what that game is to be perfectly honest with you like I, I i heard it's an action rpg and then i was hearing from some people they're like uh, it's just like dragon ball Xenoverse." and i'm like what? what do you mean by that so it's basically happening. the easiest way to explain that game i could be wrong i have played a lot in my lifetime though so i can make a couple comparisons as far as the combat is concerned in the game it's basically it's basically Xenoverse, the actual combat itself really okay um which isn't a bad thing not in any form especially for an action rpg um the exploration see it's funny because like you can compare the exploration to a couple games like i would say there's a little bit of anthem in there and a little bit of something else you, you'd have to give me a second because no yeah no you're good like I, it's cause... not fully unique but at the same time it, it has its own it has its own tropes um okay okay yeah it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to pinpoint the easiest thing to say is get Oh, have you played, like, One Piece World Seeker or seen what that looks like? Oh, okay, okay. Think of that, but with stuff in it, because that game was empty. Um, it's, so it's like World Piece One Seeker, that when you're on the ground, empty. you're... Yeah, like, very empty, like, it's kind of embarrassing, like, they released a game with, like, no NPCs or... <laughs> but basically, think of that game where, with the exploration, you can kind of go in pretty much any direction you want, everything's lush. Except for when you start flying, it's like No Man's Sky, but Goku. So you're flying, uh, you can fly through things, you have different speeds you can go at. Uh, there are flying mini games, which is really cool, and you can do stuff with the Nimbus. If you're on the ground, you run at lightning speeds and stuff, and you can like explore, go into caves and dungeons. You could do fishing, uh, you can cook, kind of like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, like, they kind of threw everything into the one game. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm and sold. Yeah. yeah. And when you get into a fight, think of a tails game. I guess you should say. So like, you'll see one enemy there. You run into that enemy, or if they notice you, they'll come up to you like an RPG and follow you. When you actually uh, get into the fight and it starts, then your button prompts come up and it basically plays like Xenoverse. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, that's the easiest way to explain that game. It's kind of hard to say, but that's that's the easiest way. Like, if you look yeah, at the, yeah, I I have a much better picture of what that game is at least trying to be now. Because mm -hmm. before, all it's like I I keep hearing like weirdly mixed things about it. I'm like, I don't, I. I thought it was fun. I, I like personally it. like it. I'm buying the. It's not. It's not Jump Force. Yeah, no, it's not Jump Force. <laughs> That's um, what I care about. Because I'm going to spend $200 on the collector's edition for it. Oh, it yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I thought about picking that up, but I'm already buying that dumb, well, not dumb, incredibly cool plastic baby. <laughs> you were able to get that? 
Yeah, I work at GameStop, so. Oh, well then, yeah, no, yeah, so you were definitely. Second, able. it went up. I got a text message from a coworker, and yeah, that's awesome. It's gonna be great. That game, I don't know if you saw the like an hour of it was put online from TGS. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch um, it though. Oh yeah, I almost wish I didn't. Like the less I know about, I, like I am so sold. So like, what is the point of watching any marketing for that game? Yeah, but pretty much. Like Monster Energy drink in it, like, oh my goodness, so much stuff, so many incredible things to look forward to in that game. Yeah, I decided not to look at anything on Death Stranding just so I can have that um, excitement. I've done that with a couple games too. I don't want to see anything, so that when it comes out, I still have that raw excitement there. Yeah, that's like that's kind of how I was with like Pokemon and stuff too, but. Pax had to ruin that for me because I went and played it and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would and that's only like a little snippet of the game. Speaking of, did you play Pokemon yet at Pax? I, I didn't. I didn't. I keep bad mouthing it um, on our <laughs> podcast on Nintendo <laughs> Enthusiast. Oh, I, I literally was brought on for an episode to specifically have my hot takes about that game. Oh god. I need well, to play it though. I need to play it. I... <sighs> I really bad mouthed Let's Go, and then that was like one of my favorite games of that. Really? <laughs> yeah, a big fan, big fan of Pokemon Go. Love that game. Love what well, that's done for my community. <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, um, after well, see, I had no thoughts on Pokemon um, Sword and Shield at first. Like people did their complaining about the national decks and all that. I personally had no real thoughts on. I was like, you know, I don't mind, just because it's like being a Pokemon fan for 22 years. I mean, eventually, you know, they always add extra Pokemon, blah, 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 blah. But eventually there was going to be a point where there's too many that they can deal with. And, like, I know someone in those comments is going to say something snarky or whatever. So I'm going to drop that whole thing right now. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what I will say, though, is, like, the people that are in the competitive scene, now I'm going to kind of be a douchebag. It's like, if you're that good at the game, maybe you should just, you know, try and build a new team. Just, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> if you're that yeah, good, maybe. just build a new team. I mean, I wouldn't make that big a deal out of it personally. But who am I? I mean, yeah, I, I'm a guy that's been doing Pokemon for 22 years. But I'm also a guy that when it hit black and white, I stopped paying attention because it just caught me off guard with the the fairy types and the well, that was Pokemon X and Y, but that's not the point. The fairy types and the trash bag. I was <laughs> yeah yeah I felt like, it was like for me I, I was like talking about i was like i think it's good that there's not all the pokemon but also because like i'm more of a very much like quality over quantity type person yeah but yeah. also like i that is incredibly like hypocritical they pointed out to me because they were like well you like jrpgs a lot well you played 180 hours of dragon quest 11 i was like Dragon Maybe. Quest 11. We need to talk about that later. Oh goodness! Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> for that to come on my Switch. I mean, it already technically is on my Switch. It's just the first ten hours, which like I can't believe Square did that. It's funny because like, it's not even the first ten hours technically because the game doesn't stop you. It only stops you when you get to your to to Galapolis. When you get there yeah. is when it stops. Oh, you. Yeah. So in theory, you can play you as can long take as you your want. Time. Yeah, yeah, you can take your time with that. Which is what I've been doing. So it's going to be like really weird when I play it on Switch. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I got like 100% of everything at the beginning. And for the rest of the game, I'm just kind of speeding through it. Because I've already played it once. But I love that game. But uh, yeah, it's like with Pokemon, I want quanti uh, I want qual more quality over the quantity. Like I feel like it is nearly impossible for me if I would say want to, in quotes, catch them all. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I would have to be in it or have been in it for a while there. Mm -hmm. Unless I hacked or cheated. And like, I just feel like that's super antithetical to a kind of game I want to play. But... It it's funny because I don't recall all the Pokemon games having all of the Pokemon ever in the past. I could be wrong, but I don't recall that. And if they did you do that... You have to trade up, yeah. Yeah, you have to trade up, and then next to that, I'm pretty sure they did it through updates on the newer ones. But, I mean, like I said, I could be wrong. Um, I didn't like um, Black and White, and I didn't like uh, Sun and Moon. So the only oh, new Pokemon wow, game... Oh, okay. I'm in the same same boat. Yeah, yeah. I like... I loved X and Y. 
Like, I loved yeah, so Pokemon I. Gold X and, and Silver. got me back into the franchise. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved Gold and Silver. I mean, I played all of them, honestly. Like, for anybody out there that thinks I didn't play Black and White, I did try Black and White. Um, I tried Black. I beat it. Didn't like it. Black 2 came out. I played it a little bit and then sold it. Didn't like it. Um, same thing with Sun and Moon. I did Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon. I Funny enough, though, with Sun and Moon, I never got past the first trial because I, I was just done. By the time I got to that trial, I'm like, the game is literally forcing you into every single cutscene every few minutes. You take a step, everyone wants to talk to you. So, like, by the time I got to the first trial, I was yeah. already, like, five hours in the game and hadn't done anything. So, I'm like, I can't do this. So, like, X and Y was my favorite next to... Um, silver and gold and i would say silver and gold is my absolute favorite but i'm gonna be realistic that's that a was good my, favorite and but that was my childhood too so like i don't know if it's yeah. nostalgia saying that i like it a lot or if that's actually how i feel because i don't like to let nostalgia take over too much because nostalgia will cloud your judgment you'll be like oh this is fantastic blah 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 and oh, you yeah. go back and play and you're like oh no this is trash <laughs> yeah. so yeah I, I i don't even know if my favorite pokemon game is good or not i i my i again it's gale of darkness which oh, is like God. my childhood Pokemon. I'm oh, sorry. That GameCube one. Is that game bad? I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Is I'm that so game so actually so legitimately I'm bad? So Don't ruin sorry. this for me. I'm so sorry. That game's so good. You got that like thing yeah, the, on your arm. You were basically Team Rocket Pokemon. that entire game, and you could only steal. Oh, Pokemon. I never thought about that. Yeah, you steal Pokemon from people. You go, so oh, you have a little bit of black stuff on you. Let me just, you know, yoink. <laughs> you just steal some kids' Pokemon yeah, and run off. True. <laughs> it was a it was an interesting way to get past the like oh wild battles don't really work in this kind of like linear rpg that we're trying to do here yeah but well um oh, man. well thanks for ruining that for me <laughs> <laughs> um now funny thing with pokemon sword and shield so one thing i will i can't stress enough when talking to people not pokemon is what i'm talking about but in general nintendo as a whole Anytime they put up, and I'm sure, I'm, I hope you've noticed, anytime they put up gameplay footage or during their directs when they show gameplay footage of anything they have coming out, the footage always looks bad graphically. Until you actually yes. see the game in person, don't ever pay attention to what they have in video. Like, it's if you care about graphics. It's like, The Witcher 3 looked fan. Fantastic oh and, yeah and yeah i forgot to hit you up about that because when yeah because we were right there and i was like oh man all of these games we just looked at were incredible but i had yeah. to an appointment but yeah witcher look is surprisingly great on switch i was like, not excited for that game That's now there was there. someone that commented on my um damn i can't recall his name i do apologize if you are watching this um i'm guess i'm quoting you but at the same time i don't remember your name i, I apologize but he commented on the <laughs> video and stated um that oh the game only looks good because it's being compressed in this video in my YouTube video, which is not true. I can say that now. <laughs> it's not true. Just because the video it looks good in my video or decent in my video, my video makes it look worse than it actually did in person. You can't capture that game and make it look good in handheld. It looks fantastic in person. But they were also saying since the Switch has a smaller screen, the game's pixels are smaller, so the game looks better. And if you put it in docked mode, it'll look like trash on your TV. Yes. M maybe, yeah, that's, that's, maybe yeah. that's true, but at the same time, so? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, it looked good. It looked good in person. It's like, did you play, you played Link's Awakening, right? Oh, boy, that was beautiful. Yeah, that game's absolutely gorgeous and it's even like prettier on that switch mini like that is why that game comes out the same day as the switch mini i feel mm -hmm. like they're trying to like get people who are going to double dip on switches yeah, and then that's also me. while they're in the store they'll be like oh, okay fine i'll get the zelda game yeah i'm getting like, a switch light so along with uh, yeah because i'm getting the the turquoise switch light and i'm getting the the pokemon one when it comes out because that one comes out on my birthday so i'm going to be grabbing that and the switch yeah. light I'm getting next week is going to be my girlfriend's after I grab the Pokemon one. So technically I'm not hoarding. So there we go. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Pokemon, funny enough, back to that, um, to, I guess to end that quickly. Um, so my, I was, I was pleasantly surprised and, um, and very sorry for the Pokemon in the game. So like the, the demo, basically you fight Nessa and you go through the gym. Uh, and do like the, the demo was honestly the game was fun but the demo was kind of trash nintendo's not very good at demos 
I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of known. They, they literally, yeah, they are not. Yeah, so They're like the not. demo was just the gym and you turn valves to get the water to go through and then you go up and fight Nessa. All, all that, it's like the first like 15 minutes of my Pokemon thing. But um, in the battle, so a cool thing about the, the Dynamaxing or Gigantamaxing or I'll just call it the Kaiju battles because that's what I care yep, about. Yeah, that's what it is. That's yeah. what it is, Pokey Kaijus. Yeah, so when you throw out your Pokemon and you get to kaiju your Pokemon and make them ginormous. So, um, a couple things I noted. When you uh, use an ability, like a powerful one, uh, especially while you're um, in kaiju form, those status effects stay in the ring. You can actually see that in the video. So, like, I did an electric attack. The ring had electricity flowing everywhere, even after the attack. And then the enemy did um, some type of water attack. I can't remember what it is right now. And then it was raining with electricity everywhere. And then they used a sand attack. And then a storm, sandstorm kicked up. And it was raining with electricity in the ring and sand brewing around. I'm like, this is the most messed up field ever. And I don't know anybody is alive right now. <laughs> like, yeah, holy cow. And then another thing I took note of, because you can hear my, my reaction in the video. When your Pokemon gets fainted, I feel like they just die. But when your Pokemon faint as Gigantamax, first, they explode. Literally, explode, right? And then, the Pokemon falls over and all the dust and gravel kicks into the air, and then they blow up a second time and your Pokemon is not there anymore. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> like, whoa. my reaction, I'm like, did I just kill this other Pokemon? Like, he literally blew up! He, he exploded! Like, I can't even, like, say that enough like people's like oh yeah okay and they see the video they're like oh no no yeah that pokemon literally just blew up like i don't know like and then another thing is it's brutal when so i had out uh i think it was yamper i had that pokemon out i believe that's what i had and the opponent had one of the newer ones that i don't know the name of yet and um they summoned a giant stone pillar and dropped it on my tiny little yamper and it squished it to death so yeah, the game looks brutal, is basically what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. these cute, cuddly creatures are literally massacring each other. I mean, yeah, that's just so true to the what the series has always been about, though. Yeah, well, I guess they add those explosions. <laughs> the explosions really yeah. change everything. The explosions change everything. That's, oh, there the you go. The last thing I want to think about. Idea. Right? Because the last thing I want to think about is my starter Pokemon being blown up. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness! Speaking of starters, which one are you gonna choose for that game? I'm usually a starter uh, fire trainer, uh, as far as yeah. the starter is oh, concerned. So, so this point, uh, this time around, I'm actually going to wait, and hopefully, they reveal what Ooh. the evolutions look like. Depending on that, I actually might make my choice. Because um, wow, I'm actually, really? Yeah, because I'm actually kind of getting tired of fire fighting pokemon um and that's what every fighting uh fire type has been lately is a fire fighting and i kind of want oh, like, i never even thought of that yeah and i want something else <laughs> so i'm gonna see what they do this time and then you know go go from there um because i think what the last fire type i did i did litten and i didn't evolve litten past that second form like i don't know i, I didn't want incineroar that's just me i'm crazy but i didn't want incineroar <laughs> Yeah, that I, I don't know. I I always kind of go for the fire ones too. Like ever since the originals, really, I've kind of done that. Um, but I, yeah, I, I was gonna start with Score Bunny, but now that you're talking about it right now, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to do Cause, someone else. Because they always make the grass type some reject Pokemon. No offense to grass trainers, it's always some reject. Okay, so like, I like Bulbasaur. Um, I don't like Chikorita. I don't like Meganium in any of those forms. Um, yeah. I didn't like Trico very much, although Trico does have the cooler looking uh, evolutions. Um, boy, my brain, I just like lost all of the all of the starters just now. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, no, you're good. I don't remember. Uh, Either way, the fire types have always been like kind of avoidable. Um, even the monkey this time looks very avoidable. So it's typically like a, a toss up between water and fire, like usually. So I'm, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I see. I might. I might even go for the grass one this time around because it's that weird, like monkey thing. 
But we already... It's final form. You know that sloth Pokemon, the big fat... No one way. That? I feel Is like he's going to look like that. No, I just feel like he's going to look okay. like that. Like I feel like he might, too. He's going to be that, but green. <laughs> like oh, Gross. Gross. Like, yeah, so I'm going to avoid that. Or it's going to be like that one holding the two big girders. I, I think... Uh, Conkelder? I forget his name, but... Um, yeah. I feel like it's going to look like one of those two. I, if, I hope I'm wrong. I really want it to be a big green Donkey Kong, but... I mean, oh, because I'd, <laughs> I'd be okay with that. Oh man, the final member of the DK crew. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> oh um, goodness, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy if it just had a tie, like a red tie, and just looked like nice, green Donkey Kong. That would be a nice call. <laughs> no, like, not, I'd be, nice I'd call. be all about that. Oh goodness, I'm kind of excited for Pokemon now. When does that come out? Like in November. Uh, the 15th of November. I believe. Holy cow. Holy yeah, it's like cow. five days after my birthday. Boy, I'm excited Fun. for my birthday because my friends are just like, I'm going to buy you this game. I'm like, hey, you, you buy me whatever game you want. They all come out at the same time. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, this, so this holiday season is really good if you're a Switch owner. Oh, like, yeah. There's, oh my goodness, you had Zelda. Damon X Machina came out. So. I'm going to wait on Damon X Machina. My problem with I what I played at PAX was fantastic. But like they don't, Nintendo won't talk about the game's multiplayer, and that's what I'm concerned with. It's like, is it just all boss fights, or can I actually do regular missions with my friends? Because like, if it's a boss fight, a boss rush, I'm not buying it. Because like, I care a lot about the multiplayer, and that's what we're going to play together. But I don't want to just fight boss fights with them. I think they come. Yeah, I, I think it's. They said that it's like some PvP aspects that are like being added later. But I, I mostly worry just about like. I've been hearing that some of the missions are just like excruciatingly long. I believe um, it. And yeah, like I, while that combat is seemingly fairly fun and, and pretty neat to have on a Switch, like it reminds me of Zone of the Enders and Armor Decor mixed together, which are the two best mech games ever. Wow, someone that's a man um, of culture, you played Zone of the Enders. Zone of the Enders is so good. I, I still haven't played the second one. I'm do I have it on my list of Kojima games that I'm playing before Death Stranding. But Wait, you're telling me yeah, that you played, played the, the first Zone of the Enders, but you've never played the second yeah. Zone of the Enders. I heard I heard the second one is like exponentially better. Too, the second so. one makes the first one Zone of the Enders two makes Zone of the Enders one look like Sonic 06. Wow. Like <laughs> Like, I think I might have to get around to playing Zone of the Enders 2 sooner yeah. rather than later. I have that uh, VR version. Okay, good. So I... Don't play it in VR. Don't play it in VR? <laughs> no, it's it's a okay. useless... No. You just play the game the regular way. Like, you you can use the VR version, just don't use the VR settings for it. Um, yeah, because it's like a remaster, so... Yeah. Man, I mean, I mean, like, I really... Is it, like, just disappointing? Like, is it just not as fun? It's disappointing, like, and if you're not used to fast movement in VR, you will... You will up chuck all over yourself. I mean, that's, yeah, well, because like it puts the game. So if you haven't seen the game, so basically, if enemies are really close to you, you can literally mash your attack button, and your character just teleports all over the screen and hits every single enemy. It's a really cool looking animation. Uh, well, in VR, you are in the cockpit of the vehicle, so not only are you not seeing any of it, you are in it. So constantly, your character is teleporting everywhere but in first person. So you're not seeing anything happen. You're just seeing colors flashing by and you wanting oh. to throw up. It's really, it's a terrible experience. That's awesome. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there already. I, oh, goodness. I love nauseating VR experiences. Wow, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know why. I just genuinely just feel them well, in my heart. Like everything you said there, you're probably just like, like yeah i gotta warn this kid about this vr game he's gonna like hurl all over himself trying to play this hideo kojima mech game i'm like all i could hear was ah oh, yes there all we right. go hey then my favorite vr game because it's funny i'm super used to the vr i i had a htc vive i now have an oculus and the psvr um a lot of vr games i've played only one game makes me sick no matter how many times i play it it's uh sunset no um uh, what is it Arizona called? Sunshine. Arizona Sunshine. Thank you. Yeah, dude. I know. Okay, that that one actually makes me a little sick. It's just like the the movement. only that one, only that one. Like you walk like way too smooth, and like on PSVR, like I have that like gun thing. Mm -hmm, me too. Yeah. And oh so, goodness, it's just it's rough. So public service announcement for anybody listening. Um, 
if you are interested in VR and you get motion sickness, the easiest way to avoid that, because I learned it playing Arizona Sunshine, all you have to do is put a fan on yourself on whatever yeah. setting you're comfortable with and it makes your body think you're actually moving. So it kind of takes away the whole nausea aspect of it. You're actually able to play your VR games comfortably. So if you're ever playing a VR game and you think you're going to get sick, just put a fan on yourself and it should help a lot, like exponentially. Yeah, that's a that's a really good tip. I like, oh goodness. It's like this has been a message from Sick Critic. No. <laughs> um so did you get to play so you played uh Zelda. Did you also play Luigi's Mansion? Yeah, I played Link's Awakening um on a TV, so not on the portable thing. Okay, yeah, but, I only did it on the TV as well. Yeah. I uh, I love I Link's Awakening was the first Zelda game I ever played. Um, so I have a lot of deeply rooted nostalgia for that game. Ooh, I have some deeply and... rooted hatred for Zelda when I was a kid. Like, Ocarina of Time is what oh, made yeah. me a Zelda fan, but the first Zelda game I ever played, because my mom, um, I grew up with a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo. Um, so my first Super Nintendo games were Mega Man X, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, and, uh, A Link to the Past. And lo and behold, Ooh. the first game I played was A Link to the Past. And... I kid you not, I was a really dumb kid. I got stuck. <laughs> I, if the game had a counter for how many hours you played, which I'm sure it did, but I was too young to look at that. But reflecting back, I think I put about 30 hours into the beginning of the game before you even save the princess, like at the beginning, like when you go down into the dungeon and find her. Yeah. Uh, so basically that first part when you go down and then your, grand, your uncle talks to you, he gives you the sword, you go up. There's a point where you're supposed to go into the main hall and just all you have to do is just push the chair over that's all you have to do just push the chair yep. over never push the chair over never knew i had to do that <laughs> i literally spent hours wandering i'm like i hate this game I'm like, like it has stayed like that for gear every time i went back to it i don't know what to do i hate this game i hate this game and then i met my friend bradley and he was like you know have you ever tried reading anything that's going on i'm like no why, why would i read anything it's like that's probably why you're stuck so i went back i read what they said and lo and behold i found out you just pushed a chair and i took that cartridge and i threw it down the fucking street <laughs> yeah i mean i was so mad at oh myself. that's so good i was so mad at myself i was such an idiot like oh god and like i was scarred basically like a 2d zelda game came out and i was like no nah, that's not me i can't do it <laughs> Like, yeah, I oh goodness, have you played any of the cuz like I mean Link to the Past is the best one. Yeah, I went really. back and finally went through all the old ones other than Oracle yeah. of Seasons and Ages. I never played those. Those two. those are the only I haven't played Minish Cap either except for the first half of the first dungeon. Um, so like I haven't played any of these Capcom ones. Mhm. Mm uh Minish Cap I didn't I got to a point and then my girlfriend got a hold of it and she went through the rest and beat it. So I still I just oh. actually need to play Minish Cap. Fun. Yeah, that was that was a situation. That tends to happen with her. I'll play something and then she'll pick up where I left off and keep going. And I'm like, well, there goes my game. So <laughs> it happened it even still happens nowadays. Like that happened with uh, Animal Crossing too. So like I come back to my village and my town my house is like really really big everything's so, everything's ransacked oh your house is just bigger <laughs> yeah well see i wish i had someone like that in my life who would just like pay off my animal crossing house <laughs> instead of, like that like kind of takes the fun out of it if you come to the game i mean and, like, it, it gives me fun in it at that point <laughs> i remember it was like uh when we we were getting into animal crossing again on the 3ds and i found out like without having to hack your, your 3ds you could like edit the save data and so i just gave myself a bunch of bells and everyone got like really because i was playing with like two other people and everyone was like super mad at me that i had like a full like i basically hit the end game of animal crossing where they're just like you just have fun and hang out with the animals which is all i wanted to do anyway <laughs> but oh. oh goodness i wish the i wish the animal crossing was there at pax this year it was super it, that kinda, wouldn't demo well is the only reason why. Like, I oh, wanted goodness. it to be there too, but no. I don't think it would demo well at all. Um, You want to hear something upsetting? What's up? I, I feel like you might know. 
like I feel like you might know this already. Um, because being a Nintendo fan, you may know, you may not, because it's it's information from the GameCube one way back in the day. I got you, I got you. I grew up with that GameCube. Yeah, did you uh are, are you sitting down right now? I am sitting down. You're you're nice and comfortable, right? Yeah, are you gonna like tell me something crazy? Like did you know the handle on the GameCube is a handle or something like that? I'm so 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 I'm still like tempering my expectations and I don't know if I should or not. Yeah, hopefully hopefully this is something you already knew or you're gonna be really upset. Really?